Andrew Raycroft on the Harbor One Hotline. Razor, uh, what was your big takeaway from the win last night, friend? The big takeaway is these guys are, are at the point where they're just throwing their sticks on the ice and, and winning hockey games. Uh, it was far from their best effort. It was uh, a sloppy first after three days at home. Uh, we see that a lot. and It's out of their routine a little bit. Lots of honey-do lists, probably not as focused as usual, but they, they hung with it, got some big saves from Lena Allmark. And again, just just keep winning. It it's unbelievable what they're doing. Yeah, is there anything throughout the season so far that you feel like they're getting away with that you know maybe could catch up to them, or are they simply just this dominant? Well, last night, like it, it almost looked like they were a little bored at times last night. Down at ice level, you, you, I could see the open play, the easy play, but it felt like they're like, ah, I'll give you know. I'm going to try and put it in this one foot window up the middle of the ice and see what happens. I'm going to ignore that, you know, ignore the easy play and try and make the hard play. So uh, that would concern me if they did that against Tampa Bay on the road or a Florida Panthers or Carolina Hurricanes on the road. But I believe that it is something that is a focus thing that they can, they can turn up because even in the third period, they kind of got to their game a little bit more, got it to the boards, got it in deep, and changed a little bit. So uh, I'm not concerned, but complacency can be a thing. And when you're 15 and 2, you don't want to let it get away. I'm always going to give this group the benefit of the doubt when it comes to that, but that could be a concern if you're looking ahead. Uh, Razor, what do you make of the uh, reforming of the perfection line? I think. I think the way things have kind of gone, that they're doing it at home, it seems like Montgomery, and he's, he's kind of alluded to it a few times, and similar to the, the Patriots and the Belichick model, where it, we're going to play our opponent each week, and we're going to change our game plan a little bit. and We're going to move Nick Foligno up to the third line against the St. Louis Blues because we like that matchup better, and then put him back on the fourth line for the game against Calgary. And, I think we'll see them get on the road, and they have a lot of road games. They have a lot of teams in the playoff games coming up where you're going to see that flip a little bit more and try and create some more depth through the lineup. Huge news is David Krejci scores two goals last night without Pasternak on his line and gets that second line, that scoring depth continues. Is that something that the forwards are okay with, like the constant jumbling of the lines throughout the season and then maybe even in the playoffs? Or is it, hey, it's early on, you're trying to tinker with it, or like you said, maybe it's a little bit matchup-based. Like, How big of a deal is the shuffling of the lines to those guys, you think? I think it's the communication of, of the why. And the pro athlete wants to know the why nowadays. Mac Jones wants to know why. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and that's, uh, I think that's the biggest thing is the communication. If These guys are probably excited to do the matchup thing. They're probably excited if they hear this is your assignment. All guys want their assignment. All guys want their role. And and so I don't, I'm not concerned about the juggling because it seems as though it's not just a juggle. There's actually a reason for it. And I would assume that Jim Montgomery's relaying that to the players. So I, I, as much as guys like their, their line mates, I think they're okay with if it's a, a certain situation that, hey, we want you going up against this guy with these two line mates. Andrew Raycroft of Nesson here with Gresham and Keevy's with us on the Harbor One Hotline, breaking down some Bruins here on this Friday. Uh, it looks like Monty abandoned the five forward power play last weekend. Is that a part of the constant tinkering, or is that going to come back? Is he kind of saving it for a rainy day? Uh, I think that is a product of it. Didn't really go well. And we have Charlie McAvoy and Hampus Lindholm, who are two of the top ten defensemen in the National Hockey League. We should probably find a way to get them on the power play over the two minutes. And I, I, we're going to see it again. I, I would almost guarantee that because of uh, Montgomery's thoughts on offense and the power play, and he is okay with it. But I think in the meantime, it's okay to have McAvoy jump out there, get him going. Lindholm, the second unit, scored a big power play goal last night with Krejci on that unit. So I think they're just trying to continue to find depth. I don't think they're – we're going to see five forwards again at some point. I think it was a good try, 
But let's get back to the the McAvoy Lindholm getting out there as well. Is this what you thought Hampus Lindholm was going to be? Because I knew he was a high draft pick, and I knew you know it was a good trade, and they they extended him right away. But I I'll, I'm definitely surprised at just how good he's been. It, it's been it's been lights out, and, and I love the signing. I did. I love the trade to to be able to turn back a nine in into Hampus Lindholm was really impressive, and, and to have him signed up and locked up, and I thought. McAvoy Lindholm, that's going to be a great pairing. But now, now it looks like all right, Lindholm is one A, and and McAvoy is one B, and you don't have to play those guys together to be dominant. And what Lindholm's doing, what his ability to be in the plus side or even every game as a Bruin, and his his dot. Like last night, that play through the neutral zone to get it out to Zaka over to Felino. It was it was a thing of beauty, and it's just, it has been beyond my expectations. I thought he was a good, solid NHLer, but this is another level. Uh, Razor, it's the Blackhawks on Saturday. What's been going on in Chicago this year? Oh, they've actually... I I thought they were going to win six games all season with what they did in the (laughs) offseason, but they've got six games to this point. So they've played teams hard. Uh, Luke Richardson, the coach there, a first-year coach, is an NHLer through and through, and and really is a good players guy, connects well. He's done a good job keeping Kane and keeping Taze, who are still very dangerous, uh, responsible and motivated. But at the end of the day, the Bruins should be able to find a way to really close out this big, long homestand or lots of home games out because this team really doesn't have a lot on the back end. What do you think of Connor Clifton's season to this point? I think uh, and also the nickname that Montgomery has given him. He's calling him Kenny Rogers. I feel like Cliffy what? Hockey is <laughs> Cliffy Hockey is one of the best nicknames going. I would leave it at that. But yeah, Montgomery the other night was calling him uh, calling him Kenny Rogers. <laughs> what? Well, he says he knows when to hold him, knows when to fold. Him. I don't know. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. But anyway, <laughs> I, I feel like there. Even. I feel like kind of under the radar though because we've talked so much about you know either the injured guys coming back or the season that Hampus is having, or the season that Olmark is having. I, I feel like Clifton's kind of flown a little bit under the radar. He has, and the whole core, the whole second core, the the Felinos, the Nosex, the Zakas, and and certainly the Connor Clifton was his ability to play twenty minutes, and it was always there. We'd see it with Connor for four games, and then the fifth game, he wouldn't know when to hold them, and he would get up and jump in, and he would cause a two on one, and then he'd be out of the lineup for a game or two, and then he'd get back in and feel. And he's just brought that consistency every game, game in, game out. We're not talking about now him stepping up. We're not talking about him with a big hit. He's just playing within himself, within the game, and doing a great job. So there's no question that he has been a little more unsung than Hampus Lindholm, but just as effective, just as important for this group. All right, Razor, who gets the tickle trunk treatment this week? Oh, it's my guy, Thomas Nosek, my favorite forward, <laughs> four-game point streak, folks. Four-game point streak, no goals in 65, two in his last two, finally scored on the goalie last night against Philadelphia. Uh, he's, been, he's been unbelievable, and, and I think I, we've talked about it on Ness and in Morning Brew. His ability to stay in the lineup after not scoring for 64 games is a testament to what he does for this group and it's nice to see him get rewarded offensively. All right, now a couple of things. Uh, You mentioned morning brew, so on Saturday, uh, you and Jaffe are going to set up the gimmick table, apparently at the uh, pro shop, and you guys are going to be in the back corner where they get the trinkets and stuff, where you guys are going to do a a live morning brew on Saturday. Saturday, I can only imagine the people bringing the signs. You know, Razor was my favorite. Jaffe's got great hair. I mean, that's what... And then on Sunday, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, go. my goodness. The Central Maine Card and Collectible Show. Oh, Razors oh, going to... Yeah, oh, that, yeah. Man. VFW that, huh? 431. <laughs> oh, no, it's at the... Uh, it, it's at the yeah. Elks Hall in Augusta, Maine. Oh. $2 beers that day, by the way. Uh, they, oh, it's, I, I, I'm going to have three dozen of them. Oh, it, oh, and it's free admission. Apparently, they're going to set you up right beside... That sounds good. They're going to put it right beside Greg the Hammer Valentine and Brutus Beefcake. <laughs> nasty Boys. Yeah, the Nasty Boys, right? Yeah. 
Yep. That sounds like a good take. Oh, uh, <laughs> boy. Yeah, it's a big weekend. It's like call, it's going to be college game day and, and morning trip, morning trip, oh, yeah. shop, right? Right, yeah. right behind the uh, the keychain, back in the corner. Uh, Razor, after watching Fourier and Wiggy yesterday try to catch passes from the jugs machine, I'm curious: is there ever an opportunity for a bunch of guys to get out there, maybe for charity, and uh, shoot pucks on uh, Andrew Raycroft? Can we get you in net again no. to, uh, at some point? No, 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 absolutely not. I, I will cut a check for whatever kind of charity needs it or wants it or wants to be a part of it. But as you saw, yeah, I mean, I, I, you, Fourier won, right? Fourier caught the most balls, mm-hmm. but that video is never going away. He lost. You lose either way. No matter what happens, you lose. It's a horrible idea. I had so much anxiety for those guys yesterday morning because I knew it was going to end poorly no matter what happens. So yeah, I'm excited for the right. amount of money they raised, yep. but it's horrible, and, and there's no way you're going to get me in there to do that. Because that's nope. true, because we get, you get a bunch of kids out there. You get 100 shots on Razor. He stops 99 of them, but you get the 1-5 hole, and all of a sudden that's what everybody's talking about. <laughs> Oh yeah, you'll be cranking the you'll be cranking the one video out of me getting scored on on Twitter over and over and over again. Everyone's gonna see it on the Twitch chat nonstop, and yep. it's not gonna matter what mm-hmm. I did otherwise. Well, thank God you got that Elks Lodge money to throw around to avoid that, brother. Let me tell you. Oh, you rat! You rat! <laughs> Andrew Raycroft with us on the Harbor One Hotline. Razor, thank you. We appreciate it. We'll thank catch you. you soon. Good luck. You got. It. Have a great weekend.